Initially, we can see it's signed uh, by John Aylward of Guildford. So did the clock come from the south, or have you known it always up here? Uh, yes, my father came from Sussex, and uh, his relatives came from Sussex as well. The immediate thing that hits you is the size of the dial, which is a 10-inch dial. Mm. And again, perhaps more striking is the use of a single hand on an eight-day clock. Yeah. And you'll see that this very large silver chapter ring is actually divided into five-minute divisions. Yes. So for pretty accurate reading, I mean, you could actually read that to within a minute or two. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Signed, obviously, there in the matted centre, but I don't know whether you'd noticed, signed below the chapter ring in a much earlier script. Oh. Do you see there? But it's slightly yes, obscured by yes. the chapter ring. Yes. And I think we can probably account for that later. Going up to the arch, we have a date dial with a nicely engraved centre yeah. there and a matching hand. Yes. Now, turning the clock round, it is fairly obvious to see that the arch has at some stage been added to the 10-inch dial. Yes. Sir. Now, bearing in mind that this man died in about 1720, the, the use of the arch was really, certainly in the provinces, not recorded at that time, not as a general rule anyway. So we can assume that this arch has probably been added slightly later, and this might account for various holes here where the chaptering might have been altered slightly in order to accommodate this date dial which has dropped slightly from the original there. Added by somebody else then, presumably? Added by a clockmaker, perhaps at a yes. slightly later yes. date. And I would yeah. think we're only talking about 20 or 30 years later. Yeah. But the joy of this, really, is the absolutely lovely movement. We've got six ringed pillars, two obviously, if you can see there, and all the pillars are latched. Now, the normal method of fitting pillars together is to pin them with a steel pin. But you can see here on this dial foot that you've actually got a little latch which just swivels around. So That's when a so, clockmaker yes. wants to take the clock to pieces for cleaning or whatever, he can just literally take it apart with a flick of a few fingers. So a wonderful, wonderful clock. And let's turn to the case, which is here. And the reason we've taken it out of the case, sadly, is because the case has been well, rather over-restored, and it does slightly detract from it. We've lost a lot of the patination. Did you have that done fairly recently or not? Uh, about ten years ago. Do you have it insured? Um, not separately. Not separately. Well, you ought to have it insured separately, because it's a super thing. If the case was in lovely original condition, for a ten-inch walnut case with such a, an obscure, if I might use that word, movement, we'd be talking about perhaps, uh, well, really anything up to eight to 10,000 pounds at auction. Mm. With the mm. case in this state, probably no more than about five to 6,000. Mm. Yeah. But it is a very, very unusual yes. clock. Yes. 